Welcome to Tech This Way. Screen. Yes. Uh, okay sikit lah. Sorry lah. Rambut dekat rumah sini lah. Yes lah lah. That's why easier bila tak ada rambut. <laughs> anyway, thanks for making the call. No worries. Uh, happy to share with you. Alright. Yeah. I don't think we've met before kan? We met once in uh, I think Etika punya building. During, uh, during the launching of the event. Apa tu nama tu? Spanko kat eh, bukan? Tak ingat dah. One of the ethical accelerator tu. Oh, okay. You did yeah. eh? Okay, I apologize. No, it's okay. <laughs> so, how are things man? Uh, Alhamdulillah, so far so good. Uh, like, like so good lah. Uh, but, uh, you can see that, you know, like uh, the, the, the market has been shrinking a bit. Um, the customer segments, uh, the behavior of the customer is changing. So, we are adapting with the new norm. Uh, but we can see that the the travel is start to returning back, especially in Indonesia. Um, here a bit slow lah, as 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 compared to Indonesia. But I think slowly we can see that the the thing is coming back. Mm. Oh, People that's cool. To, mm. yeah. yeah, But I guess yeah, I guess before we get into that, let's get to know about Nick Muhammad sikit lah, a little bit oh. more. Wait, Amran, is it started or not yet? Not yet, right? Dah start dah. Dah start dah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like to surprise people that way. Okay, okay. This is a simple one. Uh, so, go as far back as you want to share. Sejak sekolah ke... Where are you from? Eh? Hey, uh, I'm from uh, Kota Baru, Kelantan. Hmm. Uh, I, I studied in... Uh, I did my degree in uh, Multimedia University. Uh, Latin uh, Engineering. Saya berjaya. Yeah, Malacca. Oh, Malacca. Hmm. Then uh, before I graduated, uh, I got the job interview in one of the IT arm for Tamu Haji. So hmm. I joined the company for one year and then I start to basically feel uncomfortable in the corporate. <laughs> okay. You know, like, uh, because we, we, uh, we we want, we want to do more, right? We want to do more. We want to uh, in a in a, in a fast changing uh, environment. What was it I, about the what is is it about the corporate world yang tak sehati yeah, sejiwa? <laughs> yes, I think uh, like a normal. Uh, uh, it's like more more layers, uh, more politics, uh, quite bureaucracy. At least for me, you know, like uh, when I still remember, like uh, when we want to change. Uh, we to make a decision to change a button for for our app that we we built it takes uh, nearly a month you know just just to change a button uh, so i think oh it's not really progressive and I, I don't think i can learn a lot from uh from here and then uh, alhamdulillah like uh, one of my friends uh, pulling me to join my taxi which is now known as grab mm. uh, so, so, so when I, was this eh? uh early of 2014 hmm. when they still known as uh, my taxi right? hmm. um, so at that at that time they 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 they, they, they don't have the peer to peer e hailing yet they are working closely with the taxi industry uh, taxi hmm. companies hmm. then i joined them and become among the pioneer team for mobile engineering lah at that time yeah i wonder if people still remember my taxi though. at that point you're right they were just providing the apps to order regular taxis eh? betul betul hmm. uh, quite surprised quite surprised i think uh, uh, those who are in the uh, in the startup line uh, or you know like in business they they aware of my taxi but if you hmm. ask the end consumer uh, what is my taxi ah uh, they don't know <laughs> actually i remember my taxi had that one big billboard dekat pwtc Oh, uh, again, dekat, dekat Jalan Tur Razak. I seem to remember. Ada kot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I think I think that, that they was quite aggressive uh, doing the marketing back then. Mm. Even though my taxi at the same time. I mean, they secure about uh, a few millions for the Series A. And then they, they just go to the market. 
Biasa. Sorry, what were you doing there? Uh, I'm the uh, mobile engineer. Okay. Uh, assigned to handle the driver app lah at the time. Mm, mm. Yep, and then uh, I uh, they moved to Singapore, and then I joined at the company. Uh, if you know, like GoGet of my and uh, one of the company called Juriana acquired by Carozo. Hmm. And then uh, doing uh, some freelance in the Sydney and coming back here before I start my own company. So, okay. yeah. That's the so it was always the in the startup world? Uh? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. I got an offer, of course. No? We, got, we got a lot of offers from the corporates, you know, like a big hmm. corporate. Uh, but I just like uh, the way how startup works. You know? hmm. yeah. Okay. So throughout that journey, I guess you must have picked up quite a few things lah in terms of delivery, in terms of business and all that. Yep, uh, I learned a lot, Amran, uh, from the past experience, um, like from the technical side, on the product side. I used to be uh, in the product team for Grab, uh, like doing testing, uh, develop, doing the mock-up, uh, talk to the customer, and uh, I pick up the business side as well. Uh, because I was a door with the uh, capability of the uh, Grab my taxi at the time, where impacting millions of people, uh, like uh, changing the way people move on a daily basis. So, so from there, I I quite surprised uh, the potential of the technology and the business itself. Then um, it made me explore, have the interest to to be part of the like, entrepreneurship journey. And not just entrepreneurship journey, but also specifically more on the transport side. How did that? How did that happen? Is it coincidence, or it was something that you interested you? Yeah, uh, me myself, I love car, and uh, I love technology. <laughs> so I think Mufi uh, or Grab or My Taxi or even Go Go Get or My uh, and, uh, and transportation logistic are very much uh, giving the harmony synchronization of my own interest, right? Uh, for instance, like movie, I like I love cars. Uh, I, I, I I like to drive uh, sport cars like uh, rare rare cars, Mustang 5.0 GT, uh, Skyline, uh, uh, Nissan Skyline, Nissan Skyline, and everything. Kan? Even even Ferrari, Rolls Royce, I I pun dah pernah rasa. Maksudnya, uh, with with that uh, um, minat dan juga uh, into cars and technology, bring a harmony, punya synchronization lah on that mm. sense. So tell me a little bit about your journey to start movie. So before that, where were you? Uh, yep, uh, it started when uh, one one day one of my one of my uh, junior uh, in the MMU came to me and said, Nick, I, I want to borrow your car for five hour because I want to head for a ceremony in the university. Uh, I say yes, just you can just take my car, uh, and then uh, you know because I trust you, I know you, and give me some money lah in exchange of my car, right? So from that aha moment, I realized that there's not only my car sitting idle. They have uh, a few hundred car uh, uh, nearby me who are sitting idle. And if I simply combine a few apartments and condominium nearby, I can I can simply get one thousand car. So from that aha moment, I I realized hey, this is very good potential business, right? Uh, so your idle car can actually make money. We can put the the car to a better use. So, so we pay for the insurance, we, we, we pay for the parking, we pay for rock tag, insurance, everything. But uh, in the fact that we are using the car only 5% of the time, right? The most of the time, the car is sitting either on the parking lot, uh, collecting the dust. Mm. So, <laughs> so, so, so from there, I'm like, okay, I think this is a very huge potential. So I go back to my room. I did some study that uh, no one is doing yet in, the, in, in our region, mm. even in Southeast Asia. Uh, so I found a similar model in the US and Europe. They are very big. They have uh, nearly 300,000 cars at that time, uh, all belong to private car owner. And then uh, I start lah, on the journey. I wanted to ask, um, so at that point, when you had your aha moment, what were you doing at that point? Uh, so, so at that time, uh, I started with uh, uh, something uh, very close to me, like what, what I have in my hand. Uh, I don't have uh, money, of course. <laughs> I didn't have the clear picture of the idea, so I just uh, I just have a pen. Uh, so what I did so is actually you were not I, working at the time, uh, uh, At that time was a was a weekend. Uh. So so I uh, no I no as in as in uh, as a job were you working something else or? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I was uh, in uh, goget.my at the time mm. as a, a mobile lead. So, okay. um, so I take a pen and then I draw something that's similar and then uh, uh, the, the first name before movie is Will Spy. Will is like a tire. Oh, Spy Wills. is nearby. So <laughs> the name the name is uh, quite weird. So, but I have to start something, right? So so when you have idea, you need to put something uh, uh, working on instead of just waiting okay tomorrow we we, we wait tomorrow uh, my style if i have an idea i just did it straight away so, so from there like i like I, I, and then I, I did some study uh, i found that it's a very huge market for the car rental right um, car rental industry has been there for uh, so long so long years so many years right and in Malaysia alone uh, from the statistic uh, pre covid uh, they are around 600 million us dollar from ujung to ujung from the uh, Perlis to Sabah Sarawak all the total mm. rental is uh, nearly 600 million US dollar the market size uh, if you combine in Asia it's around 33 billion US dollar it's very very huge so it is a very huge opportunity to uh, quote and quote disrupt the traditional car rental industry like how uh, Grab disrupt the uh, taxi industry in that sense so uh, and then I join uh, I join uh, Magic as the, prog uh, as the program uh, and then I meet uh, one of my ex co-founders. Uh, so we managed to get some grant and until now. Lah. Yeah. But you were still with Gojek at the time. Eh? So what made you decide, okay, lah, forget this, I'm going to quit and I'm going to start my own thing. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, it, it, it was uh, quite uh, sudden actually. Uh, it's quite unprepared to be honest. Uh, because uh, fr from that from the idea, I think I cannot wait any longer because it's very huge, right? Uh, uh, the potential is very huge. So what I did is actually I, I gave a notice of uh, resignations uh, and then I just quit and then I just focus on this. Mm. Brave, brave. So sorry, yeah. So it was quite a huge uh, risk if you like eh, to, to, to jump over and say, okay lah, I'm going to start this thing. But what, what made you have that sense that, oh, I cannot wait anymore. The potential is just so big. You just had to do it. I'm not sure. Like uh, 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 sometimes, uh, you no, know, we, we we never expect. Like um, mm. I'm not sure. Like uh, like like me myself, uh, when when we can see the potential, I think uh, I just I just we just need to grab. Uh, like most of people that they have the idea. Like like a Jema said lah, they have the idea, and then uh, uh, tomorrow when they wake up, uh, they're doing the same same thing again. Mm. So <laughs> so I think. Uh, um, I just cannot wait, uh, you know, like uh, I cannot wait for two months, three months. I cannot wait for one year. We have one year uh, like, uh, you know, like saving. We just uh, jump and then we hope that we can uh, build a plane to fly. If we crash, then we die, you know, like <laughs> something like that. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. So you decided to do it. Then what happened? You went to Magic, you met your co-founder and then? Yeah. And uh, we incubate for four months. Uh, I, I learned a lot of things on the uh, business side, how to be the founders, how to do the business plan, do the financial uh, accountings and everything. And after four months, uh, we, we launched our platform. Um, and then uh, we have the uh, first paid booking on the second day. So, nice. <laughs> how did that feel? Yeah, I think uh, quite, quite nervous, you know, like uh, first time. Uh, there's a barely a, a, a basic platform. There's no insurance. There's no GPS. Uh, there's no proper EKYC uh, in place. And then uh, I just tawakal. I think uh, I believe I, I take the proper documentation. Okay lah, I give it to, to, to the guy. And uh, I managed to get I think 230 ringgit for the first booking. So first booking, uh, second booking, third booking, I dah mulang segian. You know, like oh, this is uh, can make a real money. You know, like the, your, your car. For, 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 the, for the past of many years, it become your huge liability, right? It consists of, I think, like 12 to 13% of the household income. Uh, so from that day, so I start as again, you know, like, oh, we are getting the money out of nothing, right? Mm. So I can, I can sit uh, uh, back in like uh, watching a movie and then uh, the car can basically pay my income. I can, I can go to the office nine to five. The car is working with me. So something like, very interesting. And then uh, I, I start to validate the idea talk to more people, improve the platform and Alhamdulillah, like, I mean, up to now, up to now, yeah. So the first few or orders and bookings, whose car was it that you rented up? Oh, it's my car. <laughs> okay. It's my own car, yeah. Mm. yeah. 
uh, at early stage, if I can share to you, like uh, it's very hard to get the car. You know, like uh, we, we, we as a startup, we, we grow quite uh, organically. We didn't have much uh, budget for marketing. Uh, we talk to our people nearby, our family, our neighbors, our friends. Hey, uh, you nak tak letak kereta you kan? I cakap, oh, interested, can make money. But how about the insurance? Ah, so that's one lah. So that's one of the blocker. How about the uh, the, the the identity, like uh, the the security of the driver? So another thing. So these are the things that I collect and then I we iterate as as the time go by. Uh, but uh, to back back to the uh, supply side, at the, at the beginning we have a very low uh, supply, which is focusing in uh, Klang Valley at the time. Yeah. Mm. So what year was this when you when you got your first booking? Uh, we launched, uh, I think, uh, January, uh, in the January uh, 2018. Hmm. So we get, uh, we get a booking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's been two years. So how was the, how was the journey been so far? Uh, to be honest, it's quite challenging. Uh, for the first uh, one year, 2018, uh, we, we encounter one of the biggest issue is the insurance part, right? So when we spoke to so many people, uh, they have the same concerns about the security of the car. What if the car is uh, being, uh, you know, like involved in accidents? What if uh, the car uh, got, you know, like stolen and everything? So these are the main concerns for the insurance. So we kind of like uh, literally uh, uh, pause our operation uh, until 2019. I. Uh, uh, I found back that, that we have the insurance at the time. So we spoke to uh, Allianz, uh, so they give the some coverage. Um, um, yeah, yeah. So. so from a team standpoint, so at the start, it was just for the two of you. Then how did that grow? Uh, yep, so, so uh, luckily uh, we, we start with uh, uh, actually three people. And uh, uh, one of them is the designer. Uh, one one of them is the uh, ex CEO. So uh, both of them uh, basically decided to make a move for some uh, good reason. And uh, I, I I take the I take the lead of the movie lah at the time. Uh, so alhamdulillah we managed to get up to six uh, a trainee uh, backed by the Khazana at the time. You know like uh, with with a very little uh, funding that we have, uh, little revenue at the time. So we managed to get the six uh, people to help us to build the company at the time. Mm. So uh, I did a lot of effort lah to basically hand holding them, uh, uh, like training them, uh, teaching them how how the things work. And in fact, uh, some of them uh, uh, become the Android engineer uh, in Movebee, and then now become a, a software engineer in other, other platform. Like out of nothing, we teach people to grow to pick up the programming. They can uh, up to they, they can stage where they can, they can code the, the platform and now they can become somebody. So we start with a very uh, small team, six people training, and then uh, we start to get uh, some booking revenue. Then we're rolling the revenue, we hire people, we hire more people, and then uh, Alhamdulillah, we managed to secure half millions uh, from the Traju grant mm. uh, in 2019. Uh, so with that fund, we managed to basically revamp the whole things, you know, like uh, the product. Uh, uh, the team, uh, the office, and everything, and alhamdulillah, uh, late last year we managed to seek, to, to raise uh, more than a million uh, from the angel investor, and uh, until now lah, like we are we are we are pushing the growth, we are, we are talking to the VC, we are we are, we are looking for another uh, uh, fundraising uh, uh, financial for, mm. for our company. Mm. Yeah. So the business itself, much mana? So at 2019, okay, I guess things were organically growing and all that. Kena yeah. pula COVID this year. So how how has that yeah. been for you yeah. guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so challenging for us to be honest. Uh, so uh, uh, back in 2019, when we can see the uh, very positive and healthy growth for the company, like uh, across Malaysia and Indonesia at the time. Um, so uh, uh, the user base, the vehicles are growing at least 20% month to month. Uh, so we have at the peak where we can see okay now we can hit at least uh, 1 million uh, more than more than 1 million uh, uh, monthly revenue uh, hmm. month but uh, in march covid-19 uh, declared and then uh, the things are changed forever <laughs> not forever lah like it's changing tremendously hmm. right hmm. Uh, so at that uh, point just before covid what was your how many cars did you have at that point on the platform 
At that point, uh, we have uh, total registered vehicles is uh, 8,000. Um, mm. you know, like uh, ranging from the compact to pickup truck, uh, luxury, we have Ferrari, we have uh, Rolls Royce and, mm. and, and, and you name it. So we have 8,000 plus vehicles, uh, 310 mix and model uh, and uh, uh, around 80,000 uh, user base. So the, the growth of the user base and the vehicle is so healthy or so healthy. Hmm. And uh, yeah, when, when the COVID came, uh, the things dropped. I think like ninety percent of the of the growth. Yeah. Hmm. So but, you you also, yeah. you also mentioned yeah. Sing, uh, Indonesia. Tapi, but before we go Indonesia, how did you manage to get that growth of that many cars and and that many yeah. user base? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, most of the marketing that we like uh, uh, the channel of the marketing that we are uh, we are, we were getting uh, from the uh, uh, word of mouth, right? People are talking about the platform, and uh, I think uh, they are yeah they are they are like quite surprised from uh, this uh, new way of uh, making money from the car, you know, like uh, uh, the, the the news was spread all over uh, like uh, in in the city, mm. so we can see like uh, so many. Uh, so huge growth in terms of the vehicles and user coming from the word of mouth mm. and on top of that we leverage a lot from our uh, government agency uh, namely MDAC, uh, Cradles, uh, Magic uh, to basically tap on their network to basically uh, reach out to our potential and customer yeah in terms of the marketing to be honest uh, we, we spend less than uh, 50,000 ringgit for the uh, in 2019 yeah mm. From a geography standpoint, where were most of these cars in Malaysia? Uh, mainly in uh, Klang Valley, in uh, some of them in Penang, Johor. Uh, we have quite a lot actually from Sabah, Sarawak, uh, hmm. in Kota Baru as well. But we, we put it offline because we do a lot of like uh, uh, improving in terms of quality, the picture, the description, the pricing. So we put the, them off the, the map first. Uh, until we are okay, then uh, they go through all the quality checking, then we will push them back. Yeah, mm. but mainly in uh, in the uh, west coast of Malaysia. And then what's the story with uh, Indonesia? Suddenly tercampak ke sana? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, 2000, uh, in 2019, I went to Indonesia, Jakarta, mm. uh, because MDAC organized an event. So uh, they approached me, they said that Nick, this is a good potential for you to go to Indonesia. And at the time, it's quite, you know, like, uh, it's quite expensive for us. You know, we are like a small startup uh, when we want to spend the, anything we, we think uh, so many times, right? Mm. Uh, so at the time, I need to fork out uh, around 12,000 for the fee uh, for one week in uh, Jakarta. Uh, so what I did, I'm thinking and I'm discussing with my team. And um, I say, okay, lah, I go. Tawakal, I go. So, uh, so, so, so I went to Jakarta and spent a week and uh, I discovered there's very huge potential uh, but we cannot survive here if we uh, don't play smart, right? So what we did was um, with a very limited uh, capital, we uh, working closely with a big company. So at the time, I met with uh, Traveloka. So they have uh, a problem where they have a lot of booking but they cannot be fulfilled because the car, the, car, the car that they have is very limited. So with the P2P nature, uh, the car can be, uh, like anywhere can, can be the car rental, right? So with mm. that uh, USP, unit value proposition, we go to Traveloka, he say, uh, I, can, I, I can give to you the first 1,000 car in, in the first two months. Are you interested? So from that, okay, oh, this is something that very interested. And then uh, we, we managed to, to, to basically get uh, more than 1,000, which is uh, nearly 2,000 car in the mm. first two months across uh, Jakarta, Bandung, and Bali. So from that moment, uh, we signed the agreement and then uh, we accept like so many bookings from them. And at one point, we cannot fulfill the, uh, some, some of the booking. Mm. So from that, like, we uh, started in, in Indonesia. I see. Now, uh, yeah, until now, Bendera Mubi dah berkibar, I think, uh, Abdullah, quite strong. Uh, uh, we are not really rely on Traveloka alone. We have our other channel like uh, we are working with Klook, we are working with Ticket.com, we have our regular booking, which is now getting more and bigger and uh, spreading across all other new cities uh, like uh, Tengerang, Bogor, uh, Surabaya and everything. Yeah. 
Oh, that's that's good story. Unfortunately, then okay. So then, COVID hit in March. Yeah. Um, and as you were saying that the uh, you know uh, obviously it's been hit quite bad. Um. So now that it's been start stop start stop right we kind of open but not quite. Yeah. As you and all that. <laughs> quite sad. Yeah. How do you guys? Uh, how is how? What's the plans to to hang in there and then to to move forward? Yep. Uh, it's a good question. So so we can see that that the the trend was unpredicted, right? So we, we don't know what was going to happen in the next of uh, two months from now, uh, whether the lockdown will be lifted or it will continue the the lockdown. We, we don't know, right? So what we uh, focusing was uh, we introduced like uh, in March we introduced. Uh, a, a, a two service what we call as a disinfection for you and uh, the e bazaar because in congestion of the ramadan at the time hmm. because no one is renting a car in malaysia uh, unless for a very small portion because we supply to the frontliner we, we, we supply the car for uh, some people who are moving at the time uh, so we, can, we we think that this cannot be sustained right um, so we introduce a e disinfection for you uh, it started when one of our hosts uh, asked me, like, Nick, can you disinfect our car? Because the car just uh, returned from the rental, right? I said, okay, I can arrange for you. So from that moment, uh, I, I, I said, why, why not we just, uh, just uh, disinfect his car? We can disinfect thousands of our car and in fact, other people's car as well. Hmm. So from that, we, we, we set up a new uh, initiative and then we launched disinfection for you in just two weeks. Uh, we are not stopping there. We di we disinfect uh, the building, the houses, uh, the malls, and uh, in total, it's like uh, more than half million square feet uh, that we disinfected. From that revenue, we we sustained at the time, and we launched uh, Ibaza as well. So I think I think Ibaza is 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 quite it's quite diverted from our main business, but uh, the idea is actually to grab as many things as you can during the survival period, you know. Mm, mm. Uh, uh, we can see that in June, the, the attraction is getting back. And uh, we, 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 I think uh, in July, uh, like half million revenue uh, after after just lockdown because people are, you know, like, kurung kat rumah for quite a long time. You no, know, okay, I want to go now. I want to go to Reda, I go to... And then from there, the, the booking was uh, projected very high. Uh, but uh, moving forward, what we can see is that uh, we need to just focus on our core business, which is the car rental, uh, car sharing itself. Uh, but we diversify uh, the, the focus, not just on the P2P. Uh, we are working with the corporate right now. We have a few SMEs who join us. Uh, what we did is actually we simplify the process of the car rental. If you can imagine like uh, most of the employee when they want to rent a car for the trip, uh, like pre-COVID, right? Uh, they will go to Google, WhatsApp, bank ada tak kereta sewa, and then uh, exchange the data, and then uh, make payment, then claim data on. So the process is very lengthy, right? So what we do is we simplify everything. We let's say we spoke to Maybank, contoh eh, we spoke to Maybank. Maybank can put like a, like a, like fifty thousand uh, credit in their in, in their wallet. So all the employees who are verified by the manager to rent the car, they can go to the movie and then choose any car. Uh, pay by Maybank Pass. Mm -hmm. So from that, everything bill is simplified. So we work, we, we work with that. Uh, we have a few corporate uh, join us across Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, we are working with the university. Uh, we are launching uh, uh, Unimove, U-N-I-M-O-O-V. It's one of the initiatives that we work closely with the university. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to launch uh, in quarter one. So this actually uh, will uh, uh, increase the potential revenue from the different sources. Yeah, because you can see like uh, uh, domestic uh, travel is, is there, but still uh, quite small for now. Uh, international uh, domestic uh, travelers, almost none. We, we can accept and so, so we, we, we diversify our, our revenue in that sense. Yeah. So actually I wanted to go back to that before pre-COVID. I mean pre-COVID, um, who were the customers eh? mostly? Yep, 50% uh, of our customer back then uh, was the uh, travelers, whether they are domestic or international travelers. 25% um, uh, is the millennials and uh, professional people like us, uh, where you know, like uh, they start to forego the car ownership. Uh, they start, they, they are very much comfortable using public transport. They are okay to use e-hailing, and at the at the time when they need to to go for A to B to C, 
or anything that more than 10 kilometers in radius, they would run a car, right? Uh, so, so from there, like uh, we, we can see that like, 20% of our user base are the millennials. Um, and the rest is like a professional business business uh, user. And uh, surprisingly, two to three percent of a user are the e-hailing driver. Uh, some of them doesn't have car to drive for uh, Grab and uh, my car at the time, right? Mm. So they came to us, they ran for six months and then they drive for e-hailing. So, so, you know, like, a, like, like me myself, I have a few cars uh, in, in, my, in my garage. So I can just like give my Azia for six months and then uh, from there I can make a lot of money. Um, yep. So that's a demography of our user. Yeah. So the what is the period the of the rental eh, that's that's uh, available on movie? So uh, all the car available uh, from five hour uh, to unlimited. Mm. So so as a host like uh, you, you, like me as a host I can uh, I, I can put like five hour minimum I can put like one day minimum I can put like a half day minimum. So we give the flexi flexibility to the car owner as the micro entrepreneur, micro businessman to manage their car better. So you can have the flexibility lah. Like mm -hmm. today, your car is not available, you can put it's not available. Uh, you, you want to put like a five hour minimum, you can put that. You can set your own pricing and we manage everything like the platform, the insurance, the telematics, the EKYC for you, yeah. What about the pickup and delivery? So for pickup delivery, uh, 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 during this uh, uh, like uh, the podcast, we just launched uh, the door to door delivery, where uh, as a host you can put like a five location or like up to five location that you you can deliver. I say your car is in Bangsa, you can deliver to KLA, you can deliver to KLCC or any location nearby. You can set the price right, and uh, as a renter, uh, I can set my own location. Okay lah, uh, like uh, I can I can I can I can I can choose KLCC, I can choose KLA. But if uh, the location is not there, I can request, you can send to Sumanye or not. So I put the location of Sumanye and then I press booking. And if the host is cannot be delivered to Sumanye, we have the custodian team. So mm. this custodian team will pick up the car from you and then mm. deliver the car to our rental. Yeah. So before that, before that service, how does a host deliver the car or does the renter have to come to the host's house to, to pick up the car? Yeah, yeah. Uh, prior to the door-to-door -door delivery, uh, the renter need to pick up the car, or the host need to deliver the car to the renter. I see, I see. Yeah. But and even with that, you had quite good traction, lah. Even with that model. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we can see because a lot of people are looking for money. You know. Okay, lah. Hmm. I can I can sell lah to bangsa. Uh, but you need to give me like fifty ringgit. Okay, done. Uh, hmm. But most of the time, renter we go to the host location. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So now with the COVID slowly opening, the university one sounds interesting, right? Because I guess um, a lot of new university students, you know, not everybody has a rich debt to give them a car. Uh, mm. So they can just rent. Um, so is that the kind of model that you're looking at? That they can rent a car through the universities? Yeah, 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 uh, precisely. Uh, uh, if you see like uh, right now, the practice is that uh, the student will rent any cars available uh, nearby them. Uh, and uh, most of them are not legal lah in that sense, you know, like uh, sometimes ada road tag, you know, kadang-kadang kereta tu dah apa-apa kan, let's say. So we, we receive a lot of feedback from the students and the university. They ask us if let's say uh, we can uh, build the community of the P2P car sharing within the campus, you know, like uh, the, the lecturer has the car uh, go to teaching like 9 to 5 and then the car sitting idle, can it be rent to our student? I said yes. Then uh, so mm. so we we are creating this uh, new uh, culture of the sharing within the campus area. So mm. students can rent their lecturer, their fellow friends, uh, and, and so on. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into something more exciting, lah. So what has what has the worst worst cases that has happened in terms of renting cars, lah? You know, uh, cars disappearing or and things like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, 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 we encounter uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, new experience, I would say, new experience, you know, like we're renting out the people's car to other people. So, um, one of the rare incident was that the, uh, the, the Mercedes has, that has been rented out for three days has not been written uh, in the fourth day. So, it was uh, quite, 
you know like uh, Philip macam tak tak tak, tak selesa lah. So I think uh, this is something uh, bad happen and uh, you know like some some fishy and everything. So what we did was uh, luckily we have the GPS tracker. Uh, hmm. So we track the last location of the car. Um, we uh, we have a very strong on ground team uh, to. To, to 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 basically uh, go and uh, search and rescue that kind, that kind of thing lah. So we, we go search and rescue and then we found the car uh, safely there uh, with the key inside. So I think uh, that was a very very weird uh, experience that we we, we used to have uh, early then when when before we have the strong EKYC, before we have the proper platform to basically filter out the the bad user. And uh, yeah, I think I think. That was of the, of the experience, but luckily we managed uh, the, the situation very professionally and and uh, okay, and returned back the car nicely. Yeah. So yeah. talk a little bit more about the GPS unit. So how does that work? When a host you know puts it on the platform, then how do they get it tracked? Yep. So uh, we we work with a UK company uh, to launch uh, what we call it as Movebip, M O V B I P. It's one of the advanced telematic devices uh, that we install in our host car. So uh, the host need to pay uh, 39 ringgit per month to subscribe to, for, for, for the subscription and then you can access your car anytime anyone you want. So so we, we embed in the host car and then a uh, 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 host can track and they have the capability to do real-time GPS tracking, uh, immobilizer, uh, uh, immobilize the car and we have the feature to lock and unlock the door. So, so these are the features that we provide in the Mobib. And that works for any type of car? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Okay. So uh, now we are, we were installed in a few hundred car uh, from many types and model from the uh, Asia to uh, uh, BMW, Mercedes and some of them in the Lamborghini. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if we were to go to the platform now, um, so the number, the amount of cars that's uh, already available there. So you were saying that before this, it was kind of word of mouth and organic and your network line, right? To get more supply of cars. Mm. So as you start growing, how do you scale up the, the, the number of cars that's in there? Yep, uh, we have the vision to uh, have the first 50,000 car uh, in the next of uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, so one of the strategy is actually to go to the market more effectively. Uh, we spent uh, uh, last year uh, mainly, like uh, including this year, actually mainly to fix our product. You know, like uh, when you have the basket, uh, they have the, some loophole you need to fix before you put the water, right? Mm. So we fix uh, 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 all of them, and we are reaching the product market fit. So with that, we are more comfortable to push for the marketing. So we have a very a clear uh, go to market strategy uh, we have the allocation budget to go for the social media uh, to go for uh, out of home or uh, marketing uh, and and so on so with that we can see that uh, we have the clear path to reach uh, more than 50000 car in the next of 12 months yeah okay. sorry yeah you can go ahead and take it. so from uh, when you guys started Two years ago, was it two and a half years ago? Yeah, yeah. Uh, were you the only players to do this? Uh, in Malaysia, yes, we are. We are the only player to do this. Uh, a, a lot of lalang, uh, you know, like we need to the bus, we need to make uh, make 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 a way. <laughs> it it was uh, so hard, uh, but but uh, I think uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from that experience, um, uh, because to be the pioneer, you know, like you need to do a lot of things. What were some of the big challenges? Big challenges uh, back then, even until now, is the uh, regulations and, uh, and the insurance. You know, like mm. uh, uh, we spoke to many insurance provider, including Etika. You know, they are they are, they, are, <laughs> they have the the vision that uh, they can agree that the market is very huge, and with the technology that we have, EKYC that we implemented, is all can put the risk to the minimum uh, uh, level so they are okay to come in but regulation wise uh, there's no act to say okay we are we can can go for p2p car sharing but there's no act to say cannot right it's like uh, how the grab is running back then when they are running in the gray area uh, it, it was hard 
but I, I believe that uh, 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 some government agencies uh, start to picking up the P2P car sharing. They can see that the P2P car sharing playing an important role in the mobility as a service and the future of mobility in our country. So I, I, I believe that they, the, the time will come uh, faster than we think. We thought. So there were no competition then. So there's some competition now. Yeah. Uh, you know, so how are you going to, uh, you know, now the, the, the mark, how, what are you going to address the, the competition? Because now that the models yeah. there, some are P2P, yeah. some are not quite P2P, but still, you know, opening up to uh, customers for, for car rental. Eh? Yep. Uh, so for P2P uh, players, uh, we have uh, three. Uh, me, uh, like Movie, uh, we have uh, Quick Car and Trevo. Uh, I can see that the uh, newcomers, like uh, uh, a new players who came to the market, which is good. Uh, first, it showed uh, it, it show to the market that we are not short sendiri, like, uh, uh, like even the big companies uh, came into this line, that they can have a, a, a very huge potential in this. Uh, regarding the competition wise, uh, some of the company are burning the money, uh, growth at all costs, I would say, uh, to, to acquire the market share. Uh, but for us as a startup, we need to uh, spend wisely. Of course, if you have the money, we can grow. Uh, in fact, uh, could be bigger and better in, in that sense because we have uh, uh, like passive experience, right? Mm. But uh, we believe that the um, uh, uh, the big guy have their own uh, 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 like a bigger pools of talents, uh, bigger capital to, to to go to the market to educate the market. So we can see that this is an advantage for a small smaller player like us uh, to basically uh, tap with their uh, movement, you know, like uh, to educate the market because this market uh, like P two P car sharing is uh, still uh, relatively new in this in this region, even in Southeast Asia. So we need. Uh, we need a bigger player to, to go to the market to educate people. Hey, you actually can share your car. It is safe. Uh, we have all this technology, you know, like blah, blah, blah. I think um, I would see yeah, that is uh, in a positive way, right? Um, because uh, the market is, is very huge to accommodate like uh, uh, a few, if you at the player also can, no problem. So we need to have this uh, newcomer uh, in order for us to grow, uh, educate the market, create the awareness, and then have the uh, faster learning curve. You know, like, oh, this guy doing this one, why? Oh, that, that guy doing that, why? So we learn from each other mm. and then uh, in order to serve our customer better. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you've got the growth in Malaysia, hopefully pick up again, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah. How's, uh, how's Indonesia? I guess, I guess they're being hit quite bad too, right? With, with COVID or worse than us. Mm. Yep, uh, Indonesia, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, bad than us in terms of the COVID. But we can see that they are, you know, their peoples are uh, unstoppable. You know, like <laughs> mm. they, they they just uh, go. I think I think for the first two months they uh, keep quiet in their in their home, in their house, and then after that I think they cannot stop. They cannot be stopped. So they just uh, go out, uh, uh, traveling across states, uh, across across city and states. So from there we can see lah that the growth mm. is uh, is huge. Mm. What are the? Is there any interesting differences between? The market in Indonesia and in Malaysia. Yeah, uh, the the direct uh, differentiation is uh, is the in, in Indonesia uh, they are well known with the car with driver or uh, like uh, created with driver. Let's say I touch down in Jakarta, right, from Bandung. Uh, most of the time, I will uh, hire a car with the driver. Mm. So because the the dispersion of the traffic is much at it's a traffic jam everywhere, you know. So. Yeah. So in uh, the, the major difference is that in Malaysia is like purely uh, P2P car rental drivers, like uh, you, you drive yourself. In Indonesia, we have the driver. Yeah. So that's a, the, the, the the major differentiation in a sense. So normally the drivers in Indonesia is it the car host themselves or you actually have to now arrange for another group of workers? So uh, we have to. Uh, uh, two group of people. One of the one of them is the uh, P2P. Uh, like they have a car, they they, they lose the job. Uh, they are not doing for Grab or, or Gojek in Indonesia, and they serve us. Mm. Uh, another group is the car rental. We are working very closely with the car rental partner, and in fact, uh, we are onboarding uh, more than four thousand uh, this month from the car rental from the uh, total mm. Java Island. So 
So we have a two sided there, like a, a P2P, uh, private vehicles, and a group of the car rental. Yeah. Okay. That's quite interesting. Yeah, I guess nobody wants to drive in Indonesia if you're not familiar with it, right? It's, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So what about beyond Indonesia? So are there plans for other countries or you want to focus in these two first and then start thinking about yep. expanding? Uh, uh, our main focus is uh, strengthening our footprint in Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, double down the marketing, uh, go to the market more effectively, uh, telling people that we have this service, uh, you know, like they can they can join us as a host or as a, as a user. Uh, I believe that these two market is still uh, very big for us to explore, uh, but, but we have the clear vision to go to other uh, countries like uh, in, in Thailand, in Vietnam, Philippines. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have some partners uh, ready to accept us in, uh, in Vietnam. So, but uh, just a matter of time. Uh, for now, currently we are focusing mainly on Malaysia and Indonesia. Okay, cool. Um, so, anything else you want to share with me today from a uh, future or from uh, the past or lessons to share? Uh, nothing much. I think. I think. Uh, uh, just maybe one one more thing. Like, uh, if you see in the light of uh, Hertz and uh, car car to go in the US and Europe, right? Uh, they have. Uh, very much uh, like uh, uh, shaped uh, by the uh, 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 a new way of people who are moving around. Uh, if you see like uh, Hertz uh, who bankrupt uh, fit, uh, fight for bankruptcy mm. uh, because we, we can see that the uh, fleet based car sharing uh, like Hertz and RVs uh, are now doomed already. Like uh, uh, the, the financial uh, for them is not sound where they need to bear a lot of costs, like uh, buying the car in a bulk, uh, uh, cover for the insurance, paying for the maintenance, paying the free, for the premium parking, which is uh, not make sense in terms of the uh, uh, like uh, operation of the, of, the, of the company. So we can see that the fleet-based car sharing is now doomed. People are changing into the uh, uh, more like a P2P or more lightweight when they can access to uh, many cars nearby them. Uh, the price is uh, like 30% lower than uh, you know, like a, a big company like that and they can have a more variety. So, so we can see that the, the, the trend is changing. In fact, if I can share to you in Indonesia, one of the fleet-based car sharing uh, named uh, uh, Hipcar was shut down last, uh, last December because of the uh, operation cost is not, it's not sound in the sense. So, so I believe that the potential of the P2P is very huge. Uh, where before this, uh, you know, like uh, we, we can see that uh, people, people have the mentality like, this is my car, you touch my car, I'm going to kill you, right? <laughs> so now, 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 now we, we can see like the, the, the thing is changing uh, slowly but surely. Um, uh, we can see that people are more tend to share the car uh, to, uh, to put to better use and make some money. Uh, we can see like, uh, uh, like uh, from, from small car to a bigger car, uh, in, in fact, during the COVID, uh, it was a high time for us because uh, many many people are coming to our platform to lease their car. Now we can see the growth of the car is 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 increasing like tremendously, without any marketing. You know, like mm. uh, so. I think yeah. if if you if if if, if, if you can rewind back like Airbnb back then, there was a, a, a launch in the financial crisis, like when mm. uh, travelers are looking for cheaper options, uh, homeowner are looking for more money to pay for their rent. So, same goes to us. We are in the in the, in the, in the, in the in the tough time, right? People are looking how to pay for the house and car and everything, and then this is high time. We can see that the growth is 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 like this, and we have the uh, right right vision, like a clear vision that the P two P is going to be a norm in the next of uh, two to three years from now. Mm. Yeah, mm. I have two two last questions for you. The first one is so when you are so you're quite committed to the the P two P right, but you also mentioned just now that sometimes you get to a stage where you are there is not enough to supply right you cannot meet the demand. Would you be tempted to start buying your own cars for a movie and have a small fleet to supplement the P two P? Uh, well, uh, to be honest, yes, uh, but. Uh, maybe not directly into uh, under under movie because uh, we try to be like uh, very much uh, lightweight asset company. Uh, so we are with that we are working with the car rental company closely uh, 
some of them has uh, 300 cars like uh, they nothing to do with the car like the car is not moving so we, we signed the agreement with them we we, we we onboard them to join us and then uh, with that we can have the 24 7 fleet ready to serve our customer so if you ask me for me to buy the car i think that's uh it's, it's easier to manage you know like uh, you've got a booking this is the car you know like anywhere it can, it can send to you 24 7 available but we think uh, we, we learn from the hip car like hip car and the hertz navis mm. Uh, I don't think that we we will buy the car. <laughs> so and and the last question is from a quality of the car standpoint. Right? So you know lah, if this is your own car, not necessarily everybody sayang greater and it's like dirty yeah. and all these things, right? Um, yeah. So two parts to that lah. One is how do you maintain the quality of the cars that as a renter, I'm gonna get a car that yeah. tak ada chewing gum lah, food lah and all that. Yeah, yeah. And number two is like as a host. When I get the car back, you know, the renter, the trash, the car. Right? So how do you manage these two different scenarios? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, peer to peer, uh, we have more variable to manage and uh, it introduces another complexity. So we, we very much leverage on the, the, the technology lah, to basically um, uh, make sure that these two sided uh, behave properly. Uh, and on, on, on the host side, when they want to deliver the car, uh, we have notification uh, to ask them whether like uh, they need to make sure that the car is clean, the car is uh, well prepared and, 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 and well maintained. On the uh, rental side, we have the review system, right? So in, in it's like an Airbnb. So when uh, you, you run a car, you can review the host, host you can review yourself. So we display this review transparently and openly. And uh, we believe in this, uh, in this sharing economy, uh, uh, trust is the currency. So from the review itself, we can we can detect, okay, if, if the car is, Badly reviewed, like one one star, two star. We know how to how how, how to manage them. Like we, we can take them down. We can ban the car. Uh, you know, like you cannot you cannot say. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. And then it's like self govern lah, right? Yeah. 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 I think I think I think uh, as of now, uh, uh, alhamdulillah, we don't, we don't have any issue lah with that. Like a kereta, ada kotor, ada pampers, ada. Like uh, it's it's not makes sense. Like so, like I want to ride my car. Ada ada pampers ke ada. I think uh, uh, we don't found this issue lah for now. Luckily, uh, good lah. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, good. yeah. But but of course, Samran, we are improving the platform, iterating the platform service mm. uh, day to day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Putting a better service lah from day to day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. So okay. Thanks a lot for spending time. No uh, worries. Happy to. All, happy all to the be. yeah, all the best to the and hopefully you know when the COVID gets better, you can like you say lah, right? If you can survive right now, it yeah. can only get better. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Okay, so I will, I will, I will cut there. Um, quick question. So now I'm, now I'm, I'm putting on my Etika hat. Um, so one of the things that we are trying to do is, uh, you know, when you call Etika breakdown service, eh? yeah. Um, we are trying to figure out um, how do we provide those guys with an alternative car lah, for a short period uh, and, and yeah. all that. Whether it's short period, long period lah. Um, would you be interested to discuss to to be one of the partners to provide this cars? We need to figure out the operations lah, but in principle like that lah. Okay. So you you mean the the courtesy car, right? Yes. Oh yeah yeah sure sure. I think uh, we are happy to. Uh, ah. we, we have the top we, we have the top rated uh, car that uh, that for sure this one this car can be used uh, no issue clean mm. well serviced. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yep. and you're saying your cars is mostly in the big cities lah. Obviously, Klang Valley and then Penang, Johor, and all that. even Sabah. It's funny, how did it go sampai ke Sabah? Sabah, Sarawak ada. I think uh, in total, we have, uh, I think, 400 plus in Sabah, Sarawak in hmm. combination. But we put it down because the quality of the images is not up to standard. Uh, okay. Yeah, tapi kat sana, kat sana banyak sebab uh, people who are traveling kan. Eh? Who yes. are traveling, uh, yeah. Malaysian so, from Semenanjung lah, going over there, tak ada kereta. Yeah. Demand supply, demand supply lah. Ada demand, ada supply. Ada yeah. supply, ada demand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay lah, Nick, okay. Last, yeah. Yeah, last question like, regarding the insurance, right? Uh, mm. uh, I'm not sure like, if, if there anyone, I, I spoke to Arif Taib. Arif, Arif Taib. Uh, Arif, ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. The e-channel team. Yeah. So, how, so how far did that go? So, he was, was that conversation stopped or it continued? No, uh, continue. We we consume uh, some of your API already. 
Mm. Uh, but still, uh, regarding the, the 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 policy, we are working with the, one of the uh, agency under Atika. Yeah, I'm sure you know them, MMR Group. Uh, mm. So they they are, they are creating the policy with us. We are launching a movie care, mm. like a okay. customized location. Tapi itulah. <laughs> That's good. Eh, is, is there any way to explore on this? The challenge is, I think, kalau because our, on our side, as you say lah, because there is no policy, kan? On it, yeah. it was they. They are not sure how to develop a product that can cover because it's almost like a commercial terms. But you don't want to judge like a taxi with your level of insurance, can you know? So I don't know lah. Nanti let me find out dengan Arif what's the what's the status of your conversation dengan Dora. How about the guys? Sure. But in parallel to that, tola. Nanti I will connect. I'll get the guys to talk to you. Ah, uh, because we're trying to. They are developing the framework now on how to engage companies like you guys to then. Ideally, what we want is okay. So I am an Etika customer. I call, and then at that point, um, just say, hey, you know what? You need a car. Here's a Move B, Move B punya maybe app, or we need to figure out lah the integration. Yep. Whether you download your app, and then you can just get a call, and then we will obviously pay for it. Can yeah, sure. as a customer, the truth, and then we can put some mileage limitation or yeah, type of yeah. type of car punya limitation and things like that lah. We we uh, we work with with a model uh, flag flag and uh, to other company uh, hmm. for the courtesy car. Is that there? Ah okay. Uh, Senang lah kalau dah ada model. Uh, Boleh. Yeah. Um, I will arrange a call with you dengan the team lah. Then at least you can explain to them sikit and they can share with you. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay bro. Okay, Amran. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Right. Um, I will try to edit this and then hopefully post it on this weekend lah kalau rajin. Nah, no, no, no problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Amran. Okay, bye. Yep.